Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm a software developer at ThoughtBot. Um, like any software developer, I spend about 5% of my time writing code, about 20% uh, of the time like staring at the ceiling lost in thought, and the other 75% of my time uh, looking up documentation online, desperately searching through Stack Overflow for answers to my simple, simple questions. Um, hopefully that all resonates with you. Uh, I spend a lot of my time copying and pasting errors or code snippets into search engines. Um, I hate that. I hate doing that. Not just for the sense of futility that it engenders in me, but really mostly because I have to touch the mouse a lot. Uh, I hate the mouse. I don't like it. It's a bad device. Um, what I really want is to uh, be able to like select some text and then hit a magic keystroke and make the search happen. Uh, that's, that's ideal for me. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of solutions to make this process a little bit easier of searching the internet. Uh, the number one easiest one, in my opinion, is uh, browser keyword searches. You guys know about these the keyword searches? Hold. Crap, are they great? So uh, if you're on any web page in, uh, in Firefox or Chrome or like pretty much any modern browser, maybe even Safari, I don't know, uh, if you go to like a search form and you right click on the form, uh, there will be a menu that'll say add a keyword for this search. So like if we go to like, uh, I'm gonna go to GitHub or something here. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff happening. So I can right click here and it'll say add a keyword for the search. And if I do that, I can uh, make the search, ah, you can't read this at all, but uh, it would be, let's see, can I do like a control scroll or something? How does the, how does the internet? Control shift scroll, ah, oh, well, I just did something. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the point is that you can uh, add like a keyword to the search, which would allow you to do something like type, uh, type up in your menu bar, uh, GH for GitHub, say, and then a space, and then a search term. And then it'll search as if you had typed it into that form and hit enter. Uh, this is so much better than all this nonsense about bookmarks and stuff. It's terrible. Going to Google, typing a thing in the search engine, or DuckDuckGo, or whatever you're into. Um, I'm into DuckDuckGo. Uh, so going to a search engine, typing something into the little box and hitting enter. Ah, it's for savages. It's terrible. Uh, instead, you can define one of these things. It's great. So much better. Really improve your life. Um, so, I wanted the convenience of that, but also not involving copying and pasting because I'm not an animal. So, uh, I wrote this thing called Engine Mode. Uh, Engine Mode is a really simple little Emacs package. It lets you define search engines. Uh, search engines consist of, let's see, something kind of like this. If I wanted to use GitHub, is that all readable now? Let me uh, zoom in a little, maybe even more here. How about that? Great. Yeah, cool. So I can define a search engine like this with this def engine macro. I give it a name here, uh, like GitHub, and I give it this, uh, this magic string. Hmm, magic string. <laughs> so uh, within this magic string is a percent %s. Uh, that percent %s will eventually be the thing that's replaced with your query after it's been <laughs> URL encoded. Uh, and then, we'll, uh, when, you, when you execute the function associated with this thing, it'll uh, pop open your browser and uh, open that URL with the browse URL function. Nice. That's kind of convenient. Um, As opposed to just using CURL or something. Oh, yeah, curl, browser yeah. Browser. Yeah, curl, so, curl's good, but then you download some HTML, and that's probably not really what you wanted to see when you're browsing documentation. Probably wanted a browser. Uh, yeah. So. Um, okay. So you wanted to actually display the results in a browser window. Yeah, that's right. We want to display the results in a browser. If we're looking for documentation or looking for whatever, maybe I want to search Amazon through my text editor for some reason. I'm not going to judge. Um, we probably want that to pop up in a browser window. That'd be a lot more useful for us than yeah. than a blob of HTML. To that point, yeah. uh, can you also uh, pull up search window? What, what is it? Oh yeah, so there are a couple. Uh, you can indeed. There's a W3M, which is kind of the old one, and EWW, which I assume is pronounced U, uh, which is the new one. Um, you can do that. 
Emacs 24. It is only in Emacs 24, but we're on like version 24.4 now, so I... A lot of 25 is around the corner. Five is right around the corner. <laughs> so oh. A lot of the distros uh, don't, unfortunately, don't yet come to 24. They should, but they don't yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying, I, I mean, like it. Yeah. Is this similar to Alfred? Uh, it's kind of Alfred-y. But it's uh, from within Emacs, and you still don't have to do that copy-paste step, which is Are good. you going to show us? I am going to show you. So uh, let's suppose that I've um, got this. Uh, I want to search for GitHub on GitHub. Okay. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Uh, I've already defined a function for this. If I do, let's see. I have this function, which you can't really read here, but it's uh, engine slash search GitHub. That's the function that's defined when I execute that macro. And if I execute that, it prompts me and says, search GitHub. <laughs> Damn, I need to figure out how to do that selective zoom thing. Um, it tells me, uh, search GitHub, and then it gives me uh, a prompt. And it fills in the symbol at point as the default, which is GitHub in this case. And uh, I can edit that if I want to here in the, uh, in the little mini buffer, but I'm going to just accept it, hit enter. And boom, I'm now searching cool. GitHub for GitHub. Cool. Hooray. Cool. So that's kind of convenient. Um, I could also do some other stuff. Uh, suppose I want to search for, uh, suppose we want to be able to. Seems right. Uh, if I execute that function now, it'll uh, just go to that. And it uh, turns out there are no repos with the words suppose we want to be able to in them. A loss for the world. Um, uh, you can change that. I mean, you know, that, I'm going to say that falls outside the scope of this, this talk. And, uh, <laughs> let's take that offline. Cool. So uh, this is great, but now I'm doing this meta X nonsense, and no one likes doing that. So we can also bind it to keys. Um, if I want to, I can do something like this. Here's, uh, here's duck, duck, go. It's the same basic thing. Um, Engine mode uses a uh, key map prefix. The default of that is control C forward slash. Little, little nod to the Vim folks with their forward slash for search. Um, and then I can give it any other key uh, as the additional thing after that. So if I were to execute this little snippet of code here, uh, I would have a keystroke, which is control C forward slash D, which would search DuckDuckGo in the same way as I was searching GitHub before. So, if I uh, want to search DuckDuckGo for DuckDuckGo, for example, uh, Control-C forward slash D, boop, boop, so good. So uh, that's kind of neat. It's kind of handy. I have, I have all my ducks in a, in a go, go lang joke or something. All my ducks on the go? I, don't know. I got nothing. Um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of helpful. Uh, any questions about this tool or what it's good for, why it's neat, before I talk a little bit about the code and implementation stuff? Can you give a prefix number to say how many things have selected point? What would that mean? Well, you've got, you've got control C, forward slash, and we'll do the one, the word that's going on, right? Uh, control C, forward slash D will give me a little prompt for input. And it prompts, the prompt defaults to the symbol at point, uh, whatever that is. And I can change that, of course. Right, but I'm saying, if you wanted to do the, that, that wonderful string you search for in GitHub, mm. and you <laughs> five, and to, to that. Oh, and have it select the first five symbols <laughs> at point and directly after? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we could write code that would do that, but I'm not sure that that's. Uh, I'm saying you know, the yeah. moving mouse Yeah. Well, I, so I can also just select any arbitrary chunk of text and search that, so. In a similar sort of vein, though, mm -hmm. uh, do you need anything other than %s? Uh, anything other than %s? You said, so %s oh. expands the, the... That's the only thing. That's the only thing you need. Yep, okay. yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to keep, I, I don't want to re-implement format in a, in a package. All it does is %s. It's the simplest, dumbest thing we could do. There's only one valid substitution. For engine. Well, you've never run into something where you have to re replace that string twice? Or something um, like that. I haven't. You wouldn't expect that for a website, like having a query named one thing and then another 
query parameter named an identical thing. That'd be unusual. Uh, also, you wouldn't usually have two moving parts in a search like this. Okay. Hey. I mean, maybe. Uh, it hasn't come up for me yet. Maybe you could use the prefix key to search across multiple defined search engines for the given term at point. Oh, so, uh, oh, and like pop them open in different tabs? Yeah. That'd so be kind of cool. Search for, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe. UTF-8 across DuckDuckGo and uh, GitHub. So I, I could imagine, you know what I could imagine is someone wanting to search for something in like a language or framework specific documentation repository. Like I want to search the Rails docs, but I also want to search Stack Overflow. Maybe search them both at once. Maybe you want to search for something across GitHub and Ruby Gems. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe so. Um, I don't, I, I've never felt the need for that. Usually if I want something more general, I'll just be like, nah, I'll just use DuckDuckGo. And now that'll that'll give me everything I need more or less in order. Not not to not to say that that isn't a totally valid thing, just that it's not. In in my practice, I haven't found myself needing it. Anywho, uh, any other questions before I keep moving? Cool. So this is pretty straightforward. You can define a whole bunch of engines. I, I have a file full of them. Um, they're kind of handy. Are they listed? In they are in my doc files. Yeah, so if you go to uh, github.com slash hrs slash doc files, you can see all my dirty secrets. Hmm. Is it GPL? Ah, uh, sure. It's doc files, man. Oh, this? Oh, yeah. Of course it's GPL. <laughs> what do you take me for? Free of. Free isn't freedom. Um, so, uh, I define this really simple minor mode called engine mode, and um, user. And uh, let's see, it doesn't do too much. There's a doc string associated with it. Uh, it's got a key map, which is uh, the space for those keys that I'm dynamically defining later. Um, there's the key map prefix, which is just a little custom variable. And then there are like a whole bunch of little tiny utility methods. This is how I like to write code. Could you refresh my Emacs? What's the colon for again? That's uh, uh, the colon for where? Is that positional argument? Boop. This guy here? Yeah. yeah, those are keyword arguments. Yeah, keyword arguments. Yeah. <laughs> yep. A uh, whole bunch of little tiny methods, uh, functions rather. Been using using the OO languages for a while, calling functions, methods, and stuff. And then uh, let's see, we got a little little guy there. And then we get to this one crazy uh, this crazy macro, which is uh, which is def engine. Um, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit to get more of it on the screen. Uh, there are a lot of docs associated with it. Um, here's what it does. So, uh, first of all, it asserts that the engine name is a symbol, so you can't like call your search engine the string GitHub, for example. Um, if it does, it'll fail at uh, macro expand time, I suppose. Um, then uh, the thing that actually generates is the definition of a function, which is dynamically named based on the name of that symbol. Uh, and it also generates a binding if a key binding was provided. Yeah? I'm used to using prog n. What's a prog n? Prog 1 is pretty much the same thing as a prog n. So here's the distinction. So uh, both prog n and prog 1 are for evaluating like a number of expressions. Like right? Yeah. So in the case of prog n, the return value of the whole expression, uh, the prog n, is the last one, and prog one, it's the first one. Uh, I chose to use prog one here because then the return value will be the uh, definition of the function rather than the binding, because uh, the binding's useless for one thing, and half the time I don't even supply a binding with my engines. Uh, but I, the, the return value of the function seems like the most valuable thing here. So that's why I used a prog one. Um, let's see. This thing's on Melpa. Yay! Yay, Melpa! I love Melpa. So uh, it's on Melpa. Melpa's like the best thing. Um, it's real easy to get things on a Melpa. Oh, God, that's tiny. So, uh, sheesh. Here's the recipe for engine mode. This was the PR I submitted uh, in May or whenever I wrote this thing. It's two lines. Nice. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, so you say uh, the name of your thing, your mode, 
uh, what repo it's in and what fetcher to use. A fetcher is you know, telling it what, what source of repositories it should be hitting, in this case, GitHub. Um, super easy, super simple. Um, when, I, when I wrote this thing and uh, submitted this PR to Melpa, uh, Steve Purcell, who is like the greatest guy, he's such a great guy, uh, he gave me a lot of feedback on my code, which was very helpful. I think he was the one that suggested the Prague one, actually, which was a good call, <laughs> um, now that I think about it. Uh, <laughs> So uh, that's, it's super easy. Getting things into Melpa is not hard at all. Um, let's see, here's the project itself. It's on the GitHubs. It's got a lot of documentation. Uh, it's super easy to get set up. I've got a lot of examples of different things you might want to do with it. Uh, yeah, so just copy and paste those and go nuts. Uh, if, if you've already got keyword searches set up in your browser, the reason I picked percent %s is that both Chrome and Firefox use percent %s as the substitute thing. So if you want to copy over your browser keyword search engine things into this, uh, it's just copy and paste. It's real simple. Yeah. Actually, load a script in Bash to export. I saw that. Yeah. I just saw that today. That was so cool. Uh, let's see. I think it was in, what was it? In? Mentioned in issues? I think you... There we go. Yeah. Boom. Import from Chrome. Super sweet. Yeah. So there's a gist here for that, too. So, uh, yeah, it's all coming together. Right now, it, it opens, uh, it, it defaults to opening with your default browser. If you want to override that, you can change your default browser by setting the browse URL browser function. I'm just using browse URL to open it up, so you can use anything that browse URL uh, supports, which includes uh, W3M, Freemax, uh, OO, a bunch of other browsers, you name it. Let's see. Hmm. Questions? <laughs> Very nice. Cool. That's not a question. Thanks. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, we're done. Cool. Cool.